you guys are running around outside kicking trees and pulling leaves off the tree, you're actually hurting the tree. <laughs> she's like, oh my God. Because imagine if you were standing outside just start pulling your hair. <laughs> so what we're learning is that these animals and these plants, they do have ability to think. Uh, not the way you do because they don't have the same access, but they do have the nerves that do send messages to their brain. Yeah. Do plants also regenerate? They also regenerate? Can you, don't your parents, they have like a, a, like a little garden, and then they have certain plants, they take them out, they replant the seeds? Yeah, so like that, like tomatoes. Like, yeah. like you cut yeah. up a bit. Do they, they become grow. happy when you water them? Yeah! But listen, have you ever seen a plant that was really wilted out? Yeah. They put water in it, so it's perking up and say, hey, I'm back to normal, okay? <laughs> it's the same way you do. A lot of times when you guys are tired and thirsty and hungry, you're all like, uh, your balance is off, the back of your occipital lobe is not working, then I feed you, all of a sudden you stand up, you're alive again, everything is great. So we are kind of like them, yeah. What? If a, if a plant has a brain, where would the brain be in a, in a plant's brain? I'm That's like a great brain. question, man. I think, I think it's more of, it's not a brain the way you think, like we have. It's more of like a complex nerve system oh. where they know when the weather changes. Like for example, trees have the ability to regenerate, right? Because every year when it gets cold outside, what falls off them? Leaves. And then they know when the sun gets warmer to what? Grow what? Leaves. More, more leaves, right? So that's the ability to regenerate. What? Why do they do that? Why do they just die? <laughs> you know, so oh, that's why they chop it off. Now I was also reading. I was also reading that on this test, right? One way to prepare for it, because this is easy stuff. But what they're saying is they're going to give you a passage that's really, really, really complicated. It looks like this, you know, with this really small print. Some words may be unfamiliar. Now, the best way to practice for that is to get the New York Times. Everybody know what newspaper that is? Yeah. That's the big, 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 thick one. You got the Post, the Daily News, and the New York Times. Now, if you get the New York Times, the one that you really want to pick up and the one that you want to tell mom and dad to get is the one that they cut. When you get the Tuesday edition, that's the science one. Okay? And you want to spend time reading it to develop what? You want to develop your vocabulary. Right. And more access to your brain. Right. What? No, not what we. But what you want to do is you want to start building up a habit where you say, "Mom, it's I'm Tuesday get or it. Dad." Do you uh, get it? Happen, no, you get it at the local newsstand. Okay, so around here they'll have it. Uh, if your mom and dad go to work, I'm sure where they work they have it. And you get the New York Times, and what you're going to see is that the language in that newspaper is very advanced. Look, the New York Post. That's fifth grade. As yeah, far as the school. The writing here. So you have the New York Post. People you see reading the New York Post, that's like fifth grade level. Yeah. Okay? That's fifth level. The Daily News, also. Also about fifth grade level. The New York Times, it's the only newspaper that's 12th grade. Yeah. It's 12th grade. It's high school. 12th grade, which is hard. Yeah. So when you guys pick it up and you attempt to try to read it, in the beginning it's going to be really difficult for you because you're not going to be familiar with the words. What's a tool that you want to have with you while you're reading that? You dictionary. You definitely want to have a dictionary, okay? And there's nothing wrong with having a dictionary. You get a little pocket one in case you come across a word that you don't know. Now, if you come across a word that you don't know, what do you want to do with it? You want to develop something called a word. You want to get a word wall going. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but see, now we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it up to a, take it to another level. That word wall that you did in first grade helped to get you to this point. The new word wall that you're gonna develop is gonna come from the New York Times. Dang. Okay. Now, what you're gonna to try to do is every week you're gonna get that paper. You want to learn at least three words. What? Yeah, three new words. Okay. And why do you want to do that? Because when it comes to the test, it's not that you guys are not smart and you're not gonna be able to do the test. It's just that in case you come across vocabulary that you're unfamiliar with, it may stump you. Because one part of the test is they're going to give you a passage, you read it, you answer questions. That's easy. Like they're going to give you a passage about the sponge. You read about the sponge, you answer some questions, no problem. The other part is they give you an actual excerpt from something like the New York Times, where the language is very difficult. So the main thing you want to do is you want to have mom and dad buy you the New York Times on Tuesday, and you want to spend time reading it, 
and you want to start developing that new word wall. I'll probably just forget about that. No, you don't want to forget about that. I think what we do with Ken and I is we're going to send like a little note to your parents say, hey, New York Times, Tuesday, you need it. Okay? And if you want to walk around with it, it looks really cool. You look really intelligent, okay? All right?